Well hello guys and welcome back to another one of my Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. videos. One of the complicated ones as well because we're going to be talking time travel, we're going to be talking Fitz, which is really a touchy subject for some of the fans, but we're going to be talking how Fitz, the Fitz in the pod, the Fitz that woke up, and the Fitz that kind of got reunited with Simmons at the end of episode 3 is basically an anomaly. Why is he hunted by the Chronicom Hunters? Why do they want to get rid of him or whatever they want to do with him? And why it makes perfect sense from a time traveling perspective based on what we learned on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and based on what we learned on Endgame as well. Now to get started and whether any of you likes it or not, I'm going to have to emphasize a few points on this video, like I might end up repeating myself in different ways in order to make sure that those points are delivered. I pride myself on responding to every comment in the comments section, but it's kind of hard when I have to repeat everything that I ended up mentioning on this video. So the first thing we need to do over here is kind of create a certain distinction between what we know, what we were told, and what was explained to us, and what we decided to understand, or what we decided to assume in the process. I've noticed that some of us fans, myself included, at sometimes we take facts, we misunderstand them, or we just understand them perfectly well, but then we add like 10 more things to those facts and we just build up on them, like they are fact as well, and all of them are mere assumptions. So let's take the first fact. We do know that whenever you change the past, the timeline diverges into a new timeline. You basically create a branch of the timeline. Now the general thought over here is that you create a branch from the point in which the, you know, timeline changes, but the truth is, we don't know if it's really a branch. I mean, we're not amoebas, we're not asexual beings, so we don't just split into two timelines. So there's always the chance, and this part has never been explained, that when we create a change in a timeline, a new timeline is created, a fully new timeline, one that's basically parallel, basically identical to the current timeline until the point of change. That's when it diverges and takes a different route. I think that makes a lot more sense than, you know, the idea or the notion that the timeline remains the same and when the branching occurs, we split into two, we asexually reproduce. But okay, the second thing about Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Endgame, and I cannot emphasize this one enough, is that you cannot change your past. Now that does not mean that the past of the new timeline cannot be changed. Think about it this way, you're actually creating a new timeline because you cannot change your past. So when creating a new timeline at a certain point in time and basically changing the events in such a way that you might cause some events in the past to be nonsensical, you could basically quantumly override the past of that new timeline because when you do so, you're removing nonsensical events and the branching is considered to have occurred earlier, way earlier than the moment that you actually thought you changed it. So looking at this first illustration over here, you've got timeline O and that's basically your original timeline. You're at point A, you decide to travel back to point B, and when you go back to point B, you incur a certain change, and because you cannot change your past, the past of your original timeline, you create a new timeline, N. Now the way events have played out on the original timeline is still there, the way things have been done at point B is still there, but only within the original timeline, but there's also a new sequence of events, C, on the new timeline, and basically, at the moment of creation, you're writing an all-new timeline. A timeline that's being written both back and forth, and usually with the same past prior to point C. However though, if you're changed to the events at point B, end up creating the timeline a little bit earlier, like at point E, because point D, the events of point D on the original timeline, are pretty much nonsensical for the new timeline, then hell yeah, that's where the branching occurred, and that's basically how they could have avoided the entire issue with the two fits as the fits in space and all the repercussions. I'm not a physicist, but this is all based on reading. I don't even remember the name of the theory right off the top of my head right now, but that's basically part of the research I ended up having to do at the end of Season 5, or close to the end of Season 5. But that's the part about the facts, that's the part about avoiding the entire mess with the two Fitzes that we've got at this point. You know, the Fitz that died at the end of Season 5 and the Fitz in a pod, avoiding that one of them would be an anomaly. But that doesn't mean that the way the show went is completely false or is false at all. As a matter of fact, it makes a lot of sense, it makes complete sense. We're talking about the idea it could have been avoided and without breaking the rules of Avengers Endgame or Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. But let us though start another illustration from scratch and talk about Fitz, see this in action for ourselves. 
Now just like last time, there is the original timeline O, only O over here does represent the Broken Earth in 2091, the year that the team travels to. Now the team gets picked up at point A in 2017, they are picked up from the diner, they are sent through the monolith to 2091, but without Fitz. Now Fitz gets arrested by General Hale, goes to prison, Hunter breaks him out, he ends up meeting Enoch, realizing that the team has gone to 2091 through the monolith, but the only way for him to get to 2091, save everyone, help everyone, is to sleep through it, in a pod, in space, while all that time orbiting Jupiter. So hell yeah, the guy loves Gemma, loves the team, he wants to save them, he goes to sleep in that pod and travels to the future. Now after they are done with whatever they were doing in 2091, you know, uncovering what's gonna go down in the past, how the earth gets broken, all of that good stuff, you know, Yo-Yo talking to Elder Yo-Yo and whatnot, which I'll be circling back to later in the spirit of distinguishing between fact and assumption, they all use the monolith and this time including Fitz to make it out of 2091 and back to 2018, not 2017, not the point in time that they left, which was point A, not the point in time that Fitz went to sleep in the pod, which is point B, but rather point C, with a time gap that's probably representative of the amount of time that they spent in the future. But let us though make sure that we're in agreement here. Between points A and B, there's only one Fitz in the timeline, and that Fitz is the past Fitz, the Fitz that went to prison, at the hands of General Hale, between points B and C, there's only one Fitz as well, and that's basically the Fitz that's been sleeping within the cryo chamber. However though, between point C and point D, the point of change to the timeline, or the point where the Earth pretty much gets broken, we've basically got two copies of the same Fitz, and I say the same Fitz because in the original timeline, that's the same Fitz. The sleeping Fitz, sleeping beauty, in the pod, that's obviously the same Fitz, he's the past of this Fitz. He wouldn't be here, back from the future, if he hadn't went through the sleep, you know, the cryopod sleep. So in case you want to make this argument later on, these are not two Fitzes, not two different ones, but rather the same Fitz, but only two copies from two different points in his life. Now if the Earth were to shatter and to break, our Fitz would not have died, he would have lived further, further towards 2091, not all the way towards 2091, but further towards it, at the very least until 2024 as we did see on episode 8 of season 5, you know the flashbacks, and he would at some point have had a girl who would have grown up at some point to marry the Shaw guy, and the two of them would have ended up having this kid that we came to know as Deke. However though, the situation is different once the timeline splits, this continues to be the case with the old timeline, there are two copies of Fitz there, one sleeping in a pod going to the future, so he would come back and either fail or succeed in fixing the timeline along with the rest of the team, and that version is the past life of the version that went to the future, came back, failed, grew older, had a kid, and the kid had a kid, and so on and so forth. But however though, the paradox over here is that the new timeline was created with one copy of each member of the team, because at the point of creating the new timeline, there was one copy of each member of the team, them being Colson, May, Daisy, whatever. There was just the one copy of each person on Earth and in the universe, including Enoch, but not a Fitz. There were two Fitzes at the same time. There was one in the cryo chamber, and then one in the building, figuring out that if he doesn't go in, if he doesn't help Mac and Polly, that's when the two of them wouldn't make it, that's when Mac and Polly would die, more importantly, that's when Mac would die, as in fulfilling the prophecy that Elder Yo-Yo made in the future. By the way, the answer is no, Mac did not die in the fire. That's not what Elder Yo-Yo told younger Yo-Yo. She told her that she was on fire, which by the way, can be a figure of speech. She told her that she was reaching for Mac, and then there was nothing. And then moments later, we discover that Yo-Yo doesn't have arms, Elder Yo-Yo that is. So pretty much what Yo-Yo was describing over there was when she tried to save Mac on episode 11, she was not fire, she ran, she sprinted, and then moments later, the Blades of Ruby got her instead of getting Mac. But circling back to Fitz though, we've got two Fitzes at this point, you know, at the point of the creation of the new timeline, at the point of the split. We've got a Fitz in space, a sleeping Fitz, a cryo sleep Fitz, and we've got another Fitz, a Fitz that's alive, that's kicking, that's working with the team. So the moment that he discovers this, discovers that the structure is gonna just crumble upon their heads, upon Mac and Polly's heads, he alerts May, he runs in along with May, tries to save Mac and Polly, ends up saving Mac and Polly, but in the end he runs out a second too late, and that's when he dies. So the change to the timeline over here, the change that caused it all, you know, that caused the butterfly effect, is the moment that Fitz realized, oh, they're not gonna make it out, let's go save them. 
And that little decision is what led to his death instead of Max's death, basically the thing that rippled through time, causing Daisy to decide, okay, I'm gonna use the serum. I do think that Phil Coulson always decided, hey, I'm gonna put the serum in Daisy's gauntlets, and she always decided, I'm just not gonna use it, I wanna save Coulson with it. But instead of saving Coulson, she never made it back because we know that much from everything that we heard in the future. She disappeared, she died, everyone ended up believing that she is the destroyer of worlds, and Coulson died anyway. That's why we never see Coulson in the flashbacks, you know, in 2024, and that actually makes a lot of sense. So, okay, we've got two copies of Fitz created because there were two copies of Fitz existent at the same time at the moment of the change to the timeline. One of them is in the pod, this one in the cryosleep chamber, unlike the one in the old timeline in the cryosleep chamber, is not the same one that dies at the end of season 5. I mean, we know that because this guy is gonna survive, he's not gonna travel to 2091 and then go back in time and then end up in 2018 and die over there. That's not gonna happen. At the same time, the one that died in 2018 at the end of Season 5 in the new timeline, that's not the same one from the old timeline. You know, the one that goes on with his life, has a kid, the kid has a kid, that kid's named Deke, and that Deke is still alive because the old time does exist because the old timeline is still intact and you cannot change the past of the old timeline. So when you've got old timelines and you've got four Fitzes, two of which are the past version and present version of the same Fitz, so they're really no problem, but the other two are not two different time versions of the same Fitz, not past and present, but rather two completely different versions, two unrelated versions. That's basically when you start having a problem, that's basically when one of them has got to be ruled out as an anomaly. Now the question over here is, why would we rule out the version of Fitz that died at the end of Season 5 as the anomaly, yet insist the one in the pod, the one that woke up this season, the one that is alive and kicking, is the anomaly? Well, the one that died at the end of Season 5, that's the one that's really integral to the change in the timeline, to the creation of this new timeline. Without him, this wouldn't really be the new timeline, this wouldn't be the timeline that exists, Mac wouldn't be alive, Polly wouldn't be alive, Things would have changed completely and I wonder as well if Daisy would have ever defeated Graviton without that initial nudge, that initial change caused by Fitz to the timeline. Now before some of us get all worked up and like, you know, oh my god, you don't want Fitz on the series. I do want Fitz on the series by the way, and the Castacar is one of my favorites on the series, and now that it has an explanation, even though Fitz is an anomaly, it's actually all good and I hope that they manage to save him and keep things as is for the future of the series. However though, it's no longer me, it's the series determining that he is considerably an anomaly. Now that's basically the situation with Fitz, the situation with Deke on the other hand is completely different. Deke is an anomaly, Deke is being hunted, not because he should not exist, not because there are two copies of him, but because he should not exist in this timeline. He belongs somewhere else, he belongs in a different timeline, he belongs on an Earth that's heading for a 2091 where it's completely shattered and completely broken. With that being said though, I hope I made it quite clear, I hope before we make comments as to the validity of any of my claims over here, that we actually check the relevant episodes. Say for example, the 8th, 10th, 11th, 22nd, and maybe 20th or 19th episode of last season, and of course the 3rd episode of this season. But yeah though, I do hope I was able to deliver my point, so let me know in the comments down below what you thought of all of this, let me know what you think happened over here, or how Fitz ended up being an anomaly, without of course changing facts, changing meanings of statements on the series, bending over backwards to prove a theory, because we'll just be wasting time and I'm just gonna be sitting here poking holes in every word you say in that case. Let me know as well if you did like this video by dropping it a much appreciated like, subscribing to this channel, and make sure while you're at it to enable notifications in order to get updates whenever I upload a video, publish a new community post, or start a new live stream. But until the next time that you tune in for another one of my videos, Ages of Shield or otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in to this video and have a great day.